That's Lovely. very nice. I think we're live on Facebook, just to let That's you good. know. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, I think we'll begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Lovely to welcome you to our Book of Common Prayer communion on this uh, Thursday in the 11th week after Trinity. And uh, today the Church of England remembers Monica, the mother of St. Augustine. And uh, I just thought I'd read a little bit about Monica. It's appropriate in that today that we're also um, in our cycle of monthly prayer, praying the Mother's Union prayer in our intercessions. So Monica was the mother of St. Augustine of Hippo, Hippo, a devout and strong-willed woman who prayed continually for the conversion of her three children, whom she brought up as devout Christians. But her eldest son, Augustine, caused her the most grief because he rejected the faith at the age of 17. He was grieved by his behavior and company, and she would ban him from her house. Does all of this sound familiar to any of you? <laughs> However, after a conversation with a priest, Monica ceased hounding her son to become a Christian and instead prayed continually for his conversion. When the son left Thagastri for Italy in the middle of the night so as to avoid his mum, she followed him, travelling through Carthage and Rome and eventually catching up with him in Milan, all the time praying for his conversion. And uh, that prayer was answered. And when Augustine uh, went and told his mum what had happened to him, she leapt for joy and she blessed God, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. So today we remember Monica and all those who helped to bring us to faith, um, including our mothers, where well, that's the case. Just a couple of things to draw your attention to from the pew sheets, particularly the um, return to church for this service next week. We're experimenting in a sense with returning to church, seeing how many people come. We're going to continue to live stream the service though, so that uh, those of you who who want to join on Zoom or uh, on Facebook will be able to do so. Um, but we'll be sending out a, well, a notice in the pew sheet about how we're returning to church very much as Sundays, if you've been coming to those services, uh, encouraging people to keep their social distance by using the pews in the main body of the church and uh, wearing face coverings for the service. Um, You'll also see in the pew sheet reference to the choir and how we're hoping them uh, to be able to return to church as soon as possible. But in the meanwhile, there is a video which features the choir uh, singing an anthem and a hymn. If you've not found it yet and you're able to look online, um, it's, there's a link via our Facebook page and the website, and it's on YouTube as well. Um, do ask John Sutton for help if you need it in finding that. Something that isn't in the pew sheet but will be from Sunday is we're conscious that our uh, the children of our communities are returning to school. A great deal of uncertainty about that return, a great deal of um, difference and change for them. We thought it might be a really lovely gesture to support them. Um, so we're, we're going to suggest that members of our congregations write a card which we will forward to the children we know in our churches. Um, we're going to provide a list of names, just first names only, uh, for you if you'd like to do that. Um, so if you get chance and come prepared on Sunday or uh, ask me or John to send you that list of names which will be available from Saturday, um, we hope. That is, I think, all that I have to say at the moment. So a moment of stillness and quiet as we prepare to worship God. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our queen and governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey her in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. And our collect for this week following the 11th Sunday after Trinity. O God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> The reading this morning is taken from Corinthians 1, chapter 15, verses 1 to 11. And now I want to remind you, my brothers, of the good news which I preached to you, which you received and on which your faith stands firm. That is the gospel, the message that I preached to you. You are saved by the gospel if you hold firmly to it unless it was for nothing that you believed. I passed on to you what I received, which is the great, of the greatest importance, that Christ died for our sins, as written in the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised to life three days later, as written in the scriptures, that he appeared to Peter, and then to all twelve apostles, then he appeared to more than 500 of his followers at once, most of whom are still alive, although some have died. Then he appeared to James and afterwards to all the apostles. Last of all, he appeared also to me, even though I am like someone whose birth was abnormal, for I am the least of all the apostles. I do not even deserve to be called an apostle. I persecuted God's church but by God's grace I am what I am and the grace that he gave me was not without effect on the contrary 
I have worked harder than any of the other apostles, although it's not really my own doing, but God's grace working with me. So then, whether it came from me or from them, this is what we all preach, and this is what you believe. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the 18th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning to read at the ninth verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. Thanks be to thee, O Lord, for this thy holy gospel. Let us pray. May the words of my lips and the meditation of all our hearts be now and forever acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Our gospel parable is painted in very vivid, contrasting colours. It is told we're told by Luke to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. That's pretty broad brush, isn't it? Pretty black and white. But the issues in this parable, the parable is addressing issues rather, which I think are very subtle. I think that they depend, depend upon two things, these issues. One is our image of God and the other is our sense of the purposes of faith. What's faith for? The Pharisee in the parable is expressing human judgment. And if we believe in a God who behaves like a human judge, then we will tend to treat our faith rather like that of the Pharisee. And we'll behave before God just in the way that the Pharisee does, perhaps not, not so obviously, but in our hearts. Human judgment is based on a set of standards, moral codes, not all of them derived from the law. Some come from custom or tradition or culture. Failing to meet these standards or breaching those codes can mean failing as a citizen or failing as a member of a family, rather as Augustine was deemed to fail by his mum. It means failure, which in human terms brings judgment. I think few of us actively and consciously hold other people in contempt. We're rarely that forthright. But judgment is subtle and often subconscious. And all of us are in danger of judging one another according to the standards of society or the expectations of those moral codes. How easy it is to judge according to human standards. It can seem so easy to see that someone else hasn't met the marks that society sets. Judgment like this does happen in wider society, but I think there is a special and particular danger of it in religion, in places of faith, because we can so readily distort our image of God and picture God like a human judge. Richard Raw, an American Franciscan writer, describes in his Catholic context 
how this might play out. I'm going to read from his book on the Gospel of Luke. Uh, he calls this parable one of the stories that he'd be frightened to create himself. Imagine if I got him in a Catholic suburban parish and said, a man came to me who is a member of the Knights of Columba and uh, the St. Vincent de Paul Society. He sends his children to a Catholic school. He's faithful to his wife. He pays all his bills on time and lives right down the street from you in middle America. Then there's another man who isn't doing any of these things. In fact, he's a corrupt tax collector, a loser, a failure in every sense. One day, these two men happened to come into the church at the same time. I'm telling you that this loser, this failure, this nothing person is deemed acceptable to God. And this good guy is judged unworthy. Can you imagine, he writes, the silence, the icy silence that I would feel in that suburban parish church? How they would ask the bishop to reappoint me to some other parish as soon as possible. He goes on to say that this is exactly what Jesus is getting at in the parable. He's telling his listeners that those who give way to human judgment are missing what the kingdom of heaven is all about. I think in Jesus's story, you can picture the Pharisee very easily. Isn't there a confidence in the way he walks into the temple? Almost a swagger. Can you picture him walking in, looking uh, around with that air of confidence walks straight ahead look at the way he holds his head high here is a man who is clearly doing God a favor when he comes into the temple to pray here is a man who clearly has nothing to fear from God for the Pharisee God has very clearly defined standards and God expects men and women to live up to those standards. For the Pharisee, God rewards men and women who strive hard to match the standards that God requires of them. For the Pharisee, God delights in those men and women who have shown great devotion to the law of God. And for him, God is exalted and praised by the Pharisee's reciting of those virtues that he thinks his love of God has cultivated. It can seem like a reasonable sort of faith. It's the sort of idea that's backed up by phrases like, God helps those who help themselves. What about the tax collector? On the other hand, the tax collector shows an attitude of dependence, of trust in God. He knows who he is. It reminds me of St. Paul who says, I am what I am, when he remembers his persecution of the faith. Richard Raw says that for him, the contemporary image for the tax collector is a recovering alcoholic, someone who has no illusions about themselves, someone who knows that they are weak. He says they can use straightforward talk. They can seem a little like children sometimes in their humility. But the world would call them losers. We're all losers, Richard Raw says, but most of us don't know it. It comes back, I think, to our sense of the purposes of faith. If we have a faith and our image of God. As Richard Raw says, our mistake is to think that God is only interested in us if we are good if we hold up and match up to those standards. And our definition of goodness is largely something covering up something else. God isn't trying to make us good. God might be trying to make us truthful, and that is goodness. In this parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, Jesus makes it clear that Humility and honesty are what we need when we pray to God. These are the qualities that Jesus praises. 
God doesn't call us to success. Rather, God calls us to surrender. Amen. So let us declare our faith in the God who loves us endlessly without judgment. In the words of the Nicene Creed, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So, prepare this table. Which, once again, for those on the phone, is the table in my study. As we're working on making the sitting room more of a sitting room and less of a church. May this wine be to us the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for us. May this water be the water of life springing up from the well of life. My hands are unclean. My heart is unprepared. But only say the words and I shall be clean. So as we come to our time of prayer, I'm going to play, pray the collect that is set for the feast uh, celebrating St. Monica, mother of Augustine. Faithful God, 
who strengthened Monica, the mother of Augustine, with wisdom and through her patient endurance encouraged him to seek after you. Give us the will to persist in prayer. That those who stray from you may be, may be brought to faith in your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray the Mother's Union prayer. Loving Lord, we thank you for your love so freely given to us all. We pray for families around the world. Bless the work of the Mother's Union as we seek to share your love through the encouragement, strengthening and support of marriage and family life. Empowered by your spirit, may we be united in prayer and worship and in love and service reach out as your hands across the world. In Jesus name. Amen. Let us pray. Recognizing our dependence on God and approaching God with true humility to accept God's gifts with joy. We pray, Lord, that you look with mercy on your church with all our faults and failings, all our missed opportunities and misunderstandings. Help us to learn to be truly your body on earth. In the worldwide communion, we pray for the Diocese of Omo Oran in Nigeria and Bishop Philip Akeyamu. For the Diocese of Butara in Rwanda and Bishop Nathan Gasatara and of Buteri in Kenya and Bishop Timothy Wambunia. Pray for your church in all places of poverty or conflict. Pray especially for the church in the United States that it may set a true and faithful example in these times of tension and stress. Pray for our own diocese, for our bishops John and Martin, for our archdeacons Robert and for Archdeacon Nikki as she begins to consult about reorganization of our deaneries. Pray for our own deanery, Stourbridge and our rural Dean Andrew, as he begins a sabbatical this week. And we pray for David Nicholl from Pedmore as he becomes temporarily the, area, the rural Dean in Andrew's absence. With the diocese, we pray today for families in poverty, especially those struggling to make ends meet, and any who have brought into that situation due to the coronavirus. Particularly we pray for them at the end of the summer holidays when children who normally might expect a free school meal have gone without. And those who have so few resources that they've not been able to afford the activities that other children have enjoyed over this time. Pray for the work of Churches together in Starbridge. Especially this week, we pray for the Life Debt Center. We pray for our own work at St. Mary's, for our outreach to children and families, for our toddler group as Sue and Marjorie plan a possible return for our choir children, for the work of our youth group team, Les and Elaine, Peter and Russ and Helen. Continue to thank you for all that you've given us in this difficult time the support of John, Colin and Les, 
in managing our Zoom services. And for all those who volunteered as stewards in our church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lay before you the political issues, the moral dilemmas and the dreams of peace that concern our world and all who share its resources. Where we can see no clear way forward, give us your vision and enable us to be good stewards of all you provide. We pray for those parts of our world where resources are inadequately shared. We pray for stability and equality in the United States, especially in those places beset by violence at this time. We pray for justice for those who feel their lives don't hold value in the eyes of the police or authorities. We pray for an end to that tension. We pray for peace in places torn apart by war. Continue to pray for peace in Yemen, in Syria, in Afghanistan, and Central Africa. We pray for an equitable sharing of the resources that enable countries to tackle coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you to take all our relationships and drench them in your transforming love so that we appreciate one another and value that which each has to offer. Pray for our communities, especially for those schools making provision for their children to return. Pray for the work of Old for Primary School and the head teacher Ellie Gain, for Hamdingle School and for Old Swinford Hospital School, for Red Hill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Surround with comfort and reassurance those who feel spiritually dried up or emotionally drained. Heal and mend broken bodies and broken hearts and provide clear pools of water for those who are walking through the valley of misery and depression. Pray for all those who have asked for our prayers, especially at this time for Peter and Angela Viner, Mary Joyce Tolly, Bob Bowen, Susan Haskew, Norma Wren, Christopher Peacock and Roy and Pamela. We continue to pray for Sam and Natalie, Audrey, David, Jill, Colin, Roy, Josh, Ian, Judy, Joe and Roz, Rory, Elian, Martin, Ruth, Anna, Jonathan, Noah, Dennis, the May family, the Rogerson family, and in nursing home care for Dorothy, Melita, Brian and Betty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gather into your kingdom those who have run the race and fought the good fight, and have mercy on all who are at the point of death. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, for the family of Joe Clegg, Sally, 
for the family of Kathleen Taylor. And for those who remember the anniversaries of loved ones at this time. For the families of Ian and of Michael. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks and praise for the wideness of your mercy and the personal attention of your provision for each one of us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in God's holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon the knees of your heart. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life everlasting, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sin, we have an advocate in the Father, with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, 
so to eat the flesh of thy dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and, when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, o Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you, now and always. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us. God bless you all. Lovely to see you and to hear you on the phones. I think we've got uh, Pauline with us as well, have we? I think, I think they're still muted. It's, you can only ask them to unmute. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how it works. I really don't. How can you ask somebody who's on the phone? To unmute. I, don't know. Yes, I don't know how that works. Well, it's been lovely to, to know that Dorothy and June and Joan and probably Pauline <laughs> have been with us as well as uh, all those that I can see. So God bless you and uh, hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Bye, everybody. Thank you, John. Bye. Bye, Bye, Pauline. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. See you all soon. See you soon. Bye. 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 Okay, I'm going now. Bye. Thanks very much, Colin. God bless. Okay. Bye bye then. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody.